Hello, and here is a different Math Olympiad problem. The problem wants us to find the integer part of this big sum. So obviously we cannot, well, one way is to put these numbers in, into a cal calculator and find every one of them and then sum them up and um, find the integer part, but that is just impractical. We don't want to do that. We want to find a neat mathematical way to do so. How can we solve this problem? So what do what do we mean first by integer part? So if I have a number such as 3.4 integer part of it, or some people say floor will be 3, but this is the same as the integer part of 3.9. So that is what basically we mean by this sign, floor or integer part. So in order to solve this problem, let us first consider the most general form of it. So we call it Sn. Sn is this sum, 1 plus 1 over square root of 2 plus 3 dots plus 1 over square root of n. How can I um, use this sum and solve this problem? Well, if I can find or let's say build an inequality uh, where basically Sn is bonded to a lower and an upper bond, Maybe I can use that inequality in order to find this integer part, but let's see how we can do that. So we start from two simple inequalities that I'm sure you all agree with me. And the first one is basically square root of n plus 1 is greater than a square root of n for every natural number. And the second one is square root of n is greater than square root of n minus 1 for every natural number. But how can this help me? You will see in a minute how this can be very helpful. So if I add the term square root of n to both sides of uh, this inequality, then I get square root of n plus 1 plus square root of n greater than 2 square root of n. If I reverse this inequality, in other words, if I take the reverse of each part, then the direction of the inequality changes, then I get 1, or I can actually bring 2 to the other side, so it becomes 2 over square root of n plus 1 plus a square root of n less than 1 over a square root of n. Now you can see why I started with a square root of n plus 1 and n, because now I have this beautiful term in the denominator and I can use the conjugate of this value in order, to sim in order to simplify this fraction. And if I just multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate value, then I get 2 times um, square root of n plus 1 minus a square root of n. Then in the denominator, I have n plus 1 minus n, which can be simplified to just 1. This is less than 1 over the square root of n. So this can be simplified to 1. So it just disappears. And as for the next inequality, I can do just the same. So I add uh, the term square root of n to both sides. So I get 2 square root of n greater than square root of n plus square root of n minus 1. And then I reverse it. Then I get 1 over the square root of n is less than um, 1 over square root of n plus square root of n minus 1 or times 2. In other words, if I just um, multiply the denominator and denominator by the conjugate value, again, I will get 2 times square root of n minus square root of n minus 1 over 1. So beautiful. Why? Because if you pay attention to these two inequalities, I call it A and B. So we have 1 over a square root of n in both of them. So I can use both and conclude that 2 times square root of n plus 1 minus a square root of n is always less than 1 over a square root of n. But that is also less than 2 times a square root of n minus the square root of n minus 1. Okay? So, let's see how we can make use of this. So, 
we know that our sum starts from 1 plus 1 over square root of 2, but how about I just vary n from 2 and build all those terms and then just sum all the sides of inequality. So if I just start from n equal 2, then what do I get? Here I get 2 times square root of 3 minus square root of 2 less than 1 over square root of 2 less than 2 times square root of 2 minus square root of 1. Then I put n equal 3. Then I get here 2 times square root of 4 minus square root of 3 less than 1 over square root of 3 less than 2 times square root of 3 minus square root of 2. I do one more so that you get the pattern. So this is 5, 3, uh, sorry, 4, less than 1 over square root of 4, less than 2 times square root of 4 minus square root of 3. And you can just go ahead and basically write it all, all the way up to 1 over square root of n, which is basically less than 2 times square root of n plus 1 minus square root of n and this is basically this is what I have here so this is less than 2 times square root of n minus square root of n minus 1 so if I sum all the sides of these inequalities what I get you can clearly see here that certain terms they cancel out each other for example here on the left side this term cancels this term this term cancels this term, and this term will be also cancelled by some term here. So then I will, and also here on the right side, before I uh, write the left side. So on the right side, I also see that some terms are being cancelled. So this is cancelled with this, and this is cancelled with this, and this will be cancelled by some term here. So let's just simplify this again and see what we can get. So... In total here on the left I get 2 times square root of n plus 1 minus square uh, root of 2. So, and here I get the sum. The sum started from, if you remember, it was 1 plus 1 over square root of 2. So I can just write Sn minus 1. And the right side will be um, 2 times square root of n minus 1. Beautiful. We try to bring 1 to both sides of the inequality. So I will get here 2 times square root of n plus 1. Um, if I just add 1 to both sides, then here I get uh, minus 2 square root of 2 uh, plus 1 less than sn less than 2 square root of n minus 1. Okay. So what else we can um, find out? So if you look at both sides of this inequality, I have here on the left n plus 1 under the square root, and then on the right I have n. Somehow if I could get rid of this n plus 1, maybe I can actually reach to the same number. So we again we know that square root of n is always less than the square root of n plus 1. Maybe I can use this inequality. But what else can I use? So I have to do something about this minus 2 square root of 2. So what can I do about that? So I know that 2 square root of 2 is less than uh, 3. So I can say minus 2 square root of 2 is greater than minus 3. And if I just reverse that inequality, then I can just say minus 3 is less than uh, minus 2 square root of 2 and I just need to add both sides of these two inequalities so I will get square root of n minus 3 is less than um, square root of n plus 1 so maybe actually I have to multiply both sides of this inequality also by 2 so that I have here 2 so 2 square root of n minus 3 is less than 2 square root of n plus 1 minus 2 square root of 2. I need also 1. So if I just add 1 to both sides of this inequality, then I get 2 square root of n 
minus 2 is less than 2 square root of n plus 1 minus 2 square root of 2 plus 1. But this part is precisely this part that we achieved. So I can say, finally, I have a beautiful inequality which I can use, and that is 2 square root of n minus 2 is less than sn is less than 2 square root of n minus 1. So this is very beautiful because if you pay attention to both lower and upper bounds here, so basically they are just um, all more or less the same number. So I have 2 square root of n minus 2 and here I have 2 square root of n minus 1. So I can say because their difference, the difference between this lower and upper bound is just one, then I can say the basically I have the integer part of two square root of n minus two. This must be equal to integer part of um, S n. So just look at it um, as the following: that for example, S n is greater than this is some uh, irrational number, let's say 3.41 or whatever, and this here is because it's just always one um, greater than the, the number on the left, so this will be 4.41. So obviously the integer part of Sn is equal to the integer part of the lower bound. But I already have uh, n, so n is uh, 1 million, so this is 10 to the power of 6. If I just replace it, then I get integer of integer part of S n. Um, basically, this is equal to integer part of two square root of ten to the power of six, which is ten to the power of three. So I have two thousand and minus two. And what is this? This is one thousand nine hundred ninety-eight. So we could solve the problem, and the integer value is this one. If you like this solution and um, my other videos, please make sure that you like this video and also subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting a lot of more interesting problems. Thank you.